Can't say. This is for Dave. What are you fucking doing? Hold up, dude. Just worshiping Satan? I like pickles too. Why don't we just make a pickle beer? Oh my god, you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm CH. And I'm Mori. And together we are CH and Mori. Hey Mori, what are we brewing today? Today we're brewing a kettle sour goza with dill. Well, before we get into brewing this, what is a goza? All right, ass and titties, baby. All right, now before I start regurgitating stuff I just Wikipedia two minutes ago, let me tell you what I know about gozas from my eyeball experience. I have friends who hate IPAs and don't really drink Pilsners, but absolutely love Gozas. How am I mic'd up? Does this sound good? To me, as far as Gozas go, it's a sour beer, but it's in the shallow end. The commercial Gozas I've had don't really fry your mouth. I think the first Goza I ever had was a Sierra Nevada, and it was outstanding. It's kind of a bummer though, I don't, I don't really see it anymore. O Otra vez? If you can get it in your home brewer, Buy it and brew it and compare your homebrew to that one. All right, now with the copy paste stuff, copy pasta. The Goza stems from Germany, obviously. That's a given, that's a given. Seems like everything stems from Germany. I know this style is lower in alcohol. I know. Take those stupid sunglasses off. I'm bummed too. It's generally under 5% alcohol by volume, which just gave me a phenomenal idea. How about a West Coast Goza? 7%er for those people that only want to have one or two beers a night. So it's a kettle sour, which means it's going to have a lower pH. Lower pH means more acid and less neutral, let alone alkaline. It's not really for the beginner brewer. Kettle sour means you, you need temp control. So we're going to be using our electric brew system from Anvil. Shout out to Anvil. Check this system out. We'll have a link in the description for it. It's like half the price of the grandfather. Another thing that makes kettle sours tough, you pretty much have to let it rest overnight around 90 degrees Fahrenheit with the best hopes that it's airtight so it doesn't start fermenting. I mean, yeah, just because you don't throw a packet of yeast in there doesn't mean that there's not yeast in the air, which is actually how you make pruno, prison juice. I mean, I don't know from personal experience, but a guy from a guy, a mutual friend told me that's how you make it. Should we make prison juice? Homebrew for life prison edition? Oh, and shout out to this brunch for spiking the answer, the correct answer to last week's video. Kefka, Final Fantasy VI. And for full disclosure on this video, our beer isn't done. It's in the hallway closet fermenting right now. This part, I'm filming almost a week before the part you're gonna see at the end where we do the review. Call my bluff, see if I'm bullshitting you fam. At the end of the video, my beard will probably be a little bit longer. Probably one or two more wrinkles in my eyelids, and I'll probably be three to five pounds fatter. Or skinnier, depending on me and Donnie's running schedule this week. But all right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's get back to the video. Dill pickle goza. We've noticed this beer style is getting more and more popular, and we're gonna take a shot at it today. That's right, stick around. All right, here's our recipe, fam. Take it, run with it, start a brewery, make a trillion dollars off it. Just buy us a burrito in return. We'll call it even. Water situation. RO water all the way for this style. These glacier machines are RO with a carbon filter. You want soft water for this style. Let us know in the comment section if you want a super boring video about water and uh, adding stuff to it for different beer styles. Now, before I forget this, we're also gonna be using 3.5 grams of calcium chloride to our boil. No particular part, just any part of the boil. In short, hard water for bitter beers, soft water for malty beers. Grain bill. 50-50, wheat malt and German Pilsner, that good good. Some say 60-40, but we're just gonna make it easier, 50-50. Four and a half pounds of each. Good thing about Goza's is that the grain bills are simple. Hops, not much, but we're still using them. It's a German style, so let's go with the German hop. That isn't too high in alpha acid. Going with Pearl. If you can't get Pearl, seek out Northern Brewer or Chinook. 
Chinook. One ounce coriander seed for that kind of spicy, peppery lemon taste. Half pound sea salt. You already might have this laying around. One ounce dill. I bought this at the store. Only to come home to Amazon where I found it. It was way cheaper. Dill weed, not dill seed. Kavik. Kavike, Kavik Yeast. Shout out to Donnie's Brewery for sponsoring this video with Kavike Yeast and emotional support. Should we make a video on reusing yeast? There's already a million of those videos out there, like when our dumbass has made the yeast starter video a decade too late. All right, now for the key to the city, lactobacillus. Upscale grocery stores will have it, but I prefer it in pill form. It's smaller and the store stuff always has like the flavored brands and uh, I don't know. I just like the pills. And the good thing about the pills is it's on Amazon Prime these days. It's 20 bucks and you pretty much get three batches out of it. The whole recipe will be in the link in the description as well as for the products. So the beer style we're going for today has hints of lustful and forgiving with uh, hints of rich and compelling and also hints of... Say it. M. No. B. Just say it. C. Mahomes Beer Show! strike water goes for five gallon batches generally we just use four gallons of strike water we don't measure use calculators anymore unless you're doing like an imperial or something but four gallons of strike water always seems to work itself out at the end let's crank it up to 160 crank up your power all the way up whether it's gas or electric to full blast again we're using the anvil foundry 10.5 gallon warlock machine system and we will post our review video in the description while strike is heating up mill out your grain mill it twice God, Donnie looks good. You wanna know about the do's and don'ts of buying a grain mill? Click on this video right here. Stir in your grain. Avoid grain clumps. Grain clumps aren't that chill. Let's have a resting mash for 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, let's Vorloff for another 15 minutes. Maury, tell us why we don't mash for 60 minutes these days. No, you do not. We did not need to mash for 60 minutes because the diastatic power of a grain that's produced nowadays works a lot more efficiently and you can get everything you need out of the grain in 15, 20, 30 minutes at most. You're a fucking garage, Maury. Let's get the sparge water going, let's get it up to 170, and this is a good time to crank up your anvil to 170 as well. As for the sparge water quantity, I don't even measure that out anymore, do calculations for that either. Just think about your yield five gallons all the recipes geared towards five gallons if you're doing a 90 minute boil sparge until you get six and a half gallons 60 minute boil six gallons 30 minute boil five and a half gallons in short you're going to lose about a gallon an hour some flames are more rigorous than others might lose a little bit less on electric because it's not as gnarly as propane we're going to sparge until we get six and a half gallons i think we just heated up like three or four gallons of sparge because we're going to do a 90 minute boil for this recipe maury why are we boiling for 90 minutes the thing we want to stress today is doing a 90 minute boil we're using pilsner malt which has a big precursor for dms which causes a cream corn flavor and also when you're doing a lot of mashing and boiling for kettle sours it tends to sit warm longer which creates a lot more dms so the 90 minute boil will help burn off all that dms and create a cleaner, tastier beer. Okay, so Ward is at 170. Let's bring it to a boil just for a second or close to boil. Just want to kill off any bacteria before we pitch our good belly lactobacillus pills. Kettle sours, Braj. Get to a boil twice and chill twice. Yeah. You think you got empty beer cans? No, and they're trash? Fill them up with water. These are empties. One man's trash is another man's free ice. Should I jump in there? Shut the fuck up, Donnie.
So what we're doing right now is we're keep, we're gonna wrap this thing with saran wrap to keep it airtight. Cause we're gonna let it rest overnight and we don't want any oxygen or anything else getting in. Or any dust or particles or bacteria flying through the air. Turkey we jizz. Keep, wanna keep it safe from the outside environment. That's right. The next day. Wake up marinating in shame. Reflect on the last 10 years of your life. Delete all the dumb shit that you posted on Facebook. None of it was cool. None of it was funny. Live in shame and head over to your system. All right, let's pull a reading. 3.3. That's perfect. I think. I think it's perfect. I'm going to want to taste it again after fermentation. It took about 15 hours to get this low. Shout out to Anvil. This thing stayed at 90 degrees the whole night, the whole 15 hours. All right, so let's crank it back up to boil. Let's kill off the lactobacillus bacteria and start adding our hops and spices. Let's take off this glad wrap to avoid let's weigh out our loot on the best scale in the game. Quarter ounce of hops. 90 minute boil, fam. So let's set our timer to 60 minutes. 60 minutes will pitch our hops. Before I space, let's toss in the calcium chloride. 30 minutes to go. Let's get our yeast from our refrigerator and let's bring it to room temperature and slowly let it warm up. Crush up the coriander with a coffee grinder or blender or whatever you got floating around. Half ounce sea salt. And we're gonna double down on the dill. One full ounce at five minutes left to go. Everything else goes in at five minutes. Stir like there's no tomorrow. Repeat the process, crash your beer. We're using Kaviki, so we're gonna be pitching at around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, so no need to chill to 70. All right. That's a wrap. Let's stash it somewhere dark and start praying to the beer gods. Post-fermentation vibes. I had it fermenting for about four to five days. No rush. Final gravity is looking good. About 10, 12. So we nailed it. 4.7 alcohol by volume. As far as the taste goes, I'm definitely a vinegar junkie. I can eat dill pickles and I smear mustard on everything. I recommend gauging your vinegar. Pour a few tasters, a few four ounce tasters and add white vinegar to them. I forgot to film this part. Start with five milliliters in one, then 10 milliliters in your second taster, maybe 15 milliliters in 20. Figure out your vinegar levels and scale it up. Obviously this is a very niche beer, I think. I don't know if it's gonna be the new trend, but I ended up pouring 16 ounces of white distilled vinegar into the keg. White distilled vinegar stems from grain alcohol. All right, gonna keg it and have the Braj Lords back over. Here it is, the moment we've all been waiting for. All right, so we're back. So we carbonated. Hey, I have the wrong beer. Yeah, don't do that. Okay, now we're back. Now we're back. All right, guys, we're back. We uh, carbonated for two days. We, uh, we're, we're drinking the beer, we're trying it. What do you think? Oh, I gotta try it first. We already had like four of them. What do you think? Uh, this is probably the best picnic beer I've ever had. If I were to go on a picnic, I would take this beer with me and I would have a nice turkey sandwich with cucumber and avocados. Cold turkey. I would have some salt and vinegar chips or maybe some Lay's dill pickle chips. This would pair very nicely with. It's like you have the key to my diary. It's got a very nice dill nose off the off the top here, not too much. Got a little underlying, you know, kind of saltiness. You can kind of just pick up just from smelling it. Nice body, you know, not much uh, unlike my uh, last uh, lady. The dill isn't too overpowering. It's kind of in the background, but it's definitely there, but it doesn't take over the beer. Uh, 4.7 ABV. So we hit our final gravity. We hit our, we hit, uh, our original gravity was 1047. Final gravity was 1012. Traditional German style, 4.7. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too, you know, West Coast mm -hmm. craft beer, San Diego. It's delightful. It's so refreshing. And if you didn't want the dill. And it's like 90 degrees today, so this is extra refreshing. It's a good lawnmower beer. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't want the dill, if you just wanted, or the dill and the, the vinegar tasting, if you just wanted to do a traditional Goza, I would just get rid of the dill and just hit your 3.5 pH and 
that's pretty much it. Boom, new, new beer style, new beer recipe. Yeah. It's got a good body, good amount of salt. You can taste salt, but it's not overpowering. The bitterness is subdued if you can even pick it up at all, if you really can. You can definitely pick up the, the dill on the nose and a little bit less, but still there on the finish. The acidity is nice and well-rounded and it's very much reminiscent of dill pickles and that's the best way to put it. There's no other way to describe it and I've, I've never had, I don't think I've ever had a dill pickle beer before. What should we call it? Let's leave it up to the... Yeah. What's the dill of that? What's your fucking deal, guy? <laughs> Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. <laughs> Bob Dill in like the first four letters are capitalized. I don't know. Bob, you, you decide. Send it. Send us some good ideas for a name for this beer. Though. You guys come up with a good name. You guys come up with a good name, and in the next video we'll give you a shout out. But this yep. is a great beer. Would you sell us at Booze Brothers? Even though you don't own, even though you don't own Booze Brothers, would you sell to Booze yep. Brothers? I would make this beer. It's delightful. But this is a really good beer, and I'm pretty stoked to be drinking. It turned out really well, and I would recommend uh, the viewers at home to actually try something similar. It's a great beer. If you like dill pickles, do it. Yeah. I'm sweaty. On. This is delicious. And here's us signing out. Cheers. Whether people like dill pickles or not, that's another thing. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching this week's video. Cheers to eating good. And drinking good. Okay. Cheers. <laughs>